artists and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. So this week we're doing a really fun Hamsa painting uh, which is an ancient symbol in a book Jewish and Arabic traditions. Uh, we're also incorporating an evil eye into this Hamza, so we're doing a powerful ancient protective symbol, uh, kind of cross-cultural, with a universe background, which is a really fun way to do backgrounds that I'm going to actually use an old toothbrush for. So I have my four standard brushes as per usual. Comes with a square brush, medium-sized brush, and two small detail brushes. These four come in a kit that I recommend. And then I also have an old toothbrush. All right, we're gonna use that for some splatter painting. Really fun. Gonna get that in the water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that I have for today is a background step. I have white, ultramarine blue, some violet, and some black. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so we're gonna grab our biggest brush first for our background step. And the way that I like to do this is to sort of go on a diagonal uh, with some light blue to start. So I'm gonna take some white, scoot it over to the side here and add a little bit of blue. And with this gorgeous light blue color, I'm gonna just go across diagonally right through the middle of my canvas with some textured brush strokes. It's a little bit on the darker side, so I added some white just right on top. Okay, we're just starting in the center and then moving our way towards the edges. Just a little bit more. Bring it out a little bit further. All right. Just like so. Looking good. All right. And then let's grab some purple. It's a little bit of a accent color. It's a little too light. Just a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna add some sort of here and there. And blend it into my blue a little bit. I'm working quickly with this acrylic paint. That's how we're getting the colors to blend. Okay, so just kind of put those in those two corners like so. Then I'm going to take some black, which is going to be our night sky color, and work along the outside edge. And then once I get to my colors on the inside, I'm going to blend them together. If you need a little bit more saturated blue as well to help you as a sort of intermediary that light blue and the black. Let's add some of that as well. Okay, so we're playing here with our blue and our black. Pretty much all the colors that we have on our palette in this step. And into all the corners with the black. This is a fun one. You really got to get your arm going a million miles an hour. Good dexterity practice. <laughs> a little bit of water always helps everything blend together. You want it soaking into that canvas texture. No white blank canvas left after this step. Fully saturated. Oh, 
All right, looking really good. A little bit more, close it up. Give me a little bit of that black into the center as well, since this is a nice sky. So we are dark. A beautiful light sky, dark blue black. You can add any more accent colors if you'd like as well. And if you wait a little too heavy handed there in the center, you can always clean your brush and come back with a little bit more light blue. Here and there as well. All right, that looks good to me. Our final step here for the background, I'm going to grab my medium-sized pointed brush. I'm going to take some white over to a blank part of my palette paper. And I'm going to add a couple drops of water and mix up thin white, but not too thin. You want it to be opaque enough to where it's you're not gonna like see through it. It's not a light layer. We want it to have nice solid white droplets. But you also want it to go nice and smooth. So I'm grabbing now my toothbrush. I dried it off a little bit. And I'm now going to dip into my white and water mixture. And I'm going to go along my diagonal here and just gently splatter. Always one of the most satisfying effects, <laughs> if you ask me. Alright, and some nice dense ones right along that light horizon there too. You get to make your beautiful Night sky composition, however you'd like. You can also grab a, one of your smaller brushes and add some big stars if you'd like as well. Just here and there. You could even do something fun and do like a shooting star <laughs> or a twinkling star. Always feel free to get creative. All right, that looks good to me. Let's go ahead now and let this layer dry fully and then we'll come back and add our second part. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and some fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So I just have a little bit of black, some blue and some white. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. So go ahead and grab the brush that you're most comfortable with for creating shapes, do a little sketch step. Uh, we're gonna grab some light blue and we're going to sort of paint sketch out our basic Hamza shape. So I wanna make sure that I go far down enough with this and I wanna start here towards the bottom of my canvas with a curve. Okay, like a half circle. And then we're going to go out a little bit further and sort of straighten out a bit. And then I'm just bringing that line straight up. On either side. Making sure that I'm somewhat centered. Okay, and then once we get to almost the top, we're gonna have a curve here in the center. And then a curve meeting these straighter lines that's a little bit shorter. All right, just like so. So a little bit higher up 
there with that top one. Okay. And then just kind of finessing the shape a little bit, but we're going to add the thumb and the pinky now as well. It's okay if it's a little bit wonky. All right, and I'm gonna go about halfway or so. I'm gonna do a little curve on one side and that's going to meet the rest of the shape. Curve like so. I need to bring that out a little bit further. All right, and then I'm going to grab my medium-sized brush for filling in. And we're going to fill it in with just a light medium blue. So that same color that we just used for our sketch. And this is also an opportunity to finesse this shape. So we're bringing that color right out to the sketch lines Covering the sketch lines completely. No more sketch lines visible. A nice solid blue shape here. All filled in. All right, a little bit more paint here. Decided to do the vertical orientation today, this shape. I like to have it nice and big so that we have room inside to do all of our decoration. All right. Nice and solid. Ooh, we got a little bit on the side there. So, a little trick. If you get some wet paint on a background, a lot of times you can kind of pull it up a little bit and not pull up your background color. So, like so. Just took a little bit of water on my brush. Pulled that right up. But we're also doing another stripey layer on the outside here, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And feel free to use a smaller brush when we get into these tight areas if you need to. This is one of my favorite brushes, so I tend to stick with it. <laughs> Stick with what works. Speaking of which, <laughs> we just reached 10,000 on this channel. Oh, I almost teared up saying that. Because <laughs> it's when you start a channel, you don't know if it's ever gonna get to this point. And that's actually a big milestone. I know nowadays lots of people have hundreds of thousands and even millions, but this community that's formed here around this channel is better than a million fans that I don't interact with. You guys have been so kind and just given me the best feedback and it's totally like kept me on this path and we're getting close to 200 tutorials <laughs> as well. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, and I just want to shout out and thank you, everybody, for subscribing and for watching and for painting along and for sharing your work. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white now. I'm going to let that first layer of blue dry. And I'm going to take this layer of white all around the outside here. of our shape. 
Okay, resist the urge to work on your blue because we're gonna go in there in a minute and we need things to be dry. You can always touch things up. Okay, just a nice sort of glowy white outline. All along the outside and here I can once again sort of clean things up. Every step I'm always trying to see how does my shape look? Is it even? Does it need to be brought out a little bit over here, brought in a little bit over there? A painting is the sum of its parts, so every little detail, every little brush stroke matters. Okay, and just making it as even as we can. And we're looking good. My shape is pretty centered. <laughs> Got lucky with today. All right, we're almost finished here with our white and I think we may need to let our blue dry. Okay, and if you're getting a little bit of blue into your white, that's okay. You can always brighten it a little bit later if you need to. All right, that looks good. My blue is still pretty wet, so I'm actually going to let this layer dry again. We're gonna be patient today. I'm let this dry so that we can come into our hand area with some nice white and have it be nice and clean. So let's step away for a minute and we'll come right back. Okay, welcome back artists. We're getting right back to it. We got a dry blue layer. So let's go ahead and start adding all of our fun decorations on the inside. So I'm gonna start with my second to smallest little detail brush. And I'm going to be working down here in the bottom part first. We're going to create our eye. I'm going to start with white. And I'm going to try to center it as best as I can here in the lower part of the palm. And I'm going to do a little curve that almost mimics the curve of the palm itself. And then I'll do a little oval on top here. Needs to be a little bit more curved on top. That looks about right. And that's going to be our main white of the eye part. Okay, and we can just go ahead and fill that in with white as well. And you could use a larger brush for the fill-in, but I think I'm just gonna stick with this guy. All right. Looking good. Let's go ahead and space out our little finger decorations now as well. So same brush, I'm going to do a little white circle here at the top of each three of these fingers. Like so. And also one here in our thumb and pinky. Like so. Cute. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add some squiggly lines. Going to go maybe like half inch below 
the circle and gently wiggle my way down. And I want to stop before I get all the way to the eye, leaving a little bit of space for some fun things that we'll add. All right, just filling in our whole palm now with these beautiful decorations. Okay, looks good. I'm going to do a little white curved brush stroke down here too, just kind of getting decorative now. Great, looking good. Let's go ahead and play with some blue now. So with our beautiful bright blue, we can add a pupil in our eye and it's going to blend a little bit with the light blue and I'm just going to go with that. You could do a darker blue if you wanted to wait a minute and let the white dry or you can just kind of blend right on the canvas like I'm doing. Just a nice round ball here. Or the pupil or the iris, rather. Not the pupil yet. Doing a blue eye. Cute, looking good. Great, and then let's take that blue as well up top. We're gonna do little flowers. We're gonna have little petals coming off in four different directions. And then little ones in between if you'd like as well. We'll just have a quick and simple little blue and white flower. Easy peasy. This process very much reminds me of doing henna and the tattoos, temporary, which I did briefly actually with a company. We did henna and face painting. Hard job. Lucrative work though, can be. Because you can do a lot, but hard on the body and hard on the hand. It's one of the reasons why I started the channel and focus on teaching instead of producing art because I can't produce enough to compete with like a factory. <laughs> I am not a machine. I'm just here to have fun and relax. Okay, that's looking good. I blended a little bit of my white in there on accident. I was balancing my hand, so let me just touch that up real quick. Okay, and then I'm gonna do little flowers here around my other white shapes as well. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. And then I can kind of use the blue to make a better circle if I need to. We're gonna have a little flower down here too. I'm also going to have a flower on my eye. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or however many you end up. Less if needed. And both of those flowers, since they're a little big for the space, kind of crept into my white. So I think I'll come and bring some white back in there. Let me just cover that up real quick. 
some of its parts. Devil's in the details. Okay. And let's go into the flower down here as well with that same dark blue. And then we'll do flower around our eye as well. And even though this is not a perfect circular shape, we can still sort of build our petals with that like four corners method that I do. It helps me block things out rather than trying to go all the way around. Okay, and we're definitely going to need one more row of petals. Very pretty. All right, and then just gonna fill those in as well. We just have a few more little details to add with our blue. And then our black will finish everything off. Let me know what you think of paintings like this in the comments section. It's a little bit kind of boho. It's a little different than what I usually do and sort of more my style. <laughs> so I want to know if you guys like it. And if you're painting along, I would love to see your work. So I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club that's specifically designed for my students to do just that. Make sure if you're painting along or even if you're just painting in general and want to join and show us what you're up to, to join us over there. There's a link below to join in the description box. I also pin things in the comments section for you guys for easy access. So cute. I'm really liking it. I think this might be one of my paintings that ends up hanging in my house. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to add some leaves to this vine very delicately on either side, just kind of work my way up there, just like so. And I'm putting these sort of in the parts that curve in so that it ends up being almost like a straight line. Rather than going further out on these outside furthest edges, so we're filling in that shape there instead. Growing up and then blossoming at the top. Cute, cute, cute. Okay. And I'm also going to take some of my blue and go right down between these two fingers. Like so. And then in between these two fingers. Right, things are coming together. Home stretch, folks. I want to end those two lines at about the same height. Okay, and then seeing that we need some white squiggles here from these thumb and pinky flowers, too. Cute, cute, cute. 
and maybe even a few little leaves if we can fit them in there. Take your time with this painting too. Don't rush like I had to do for all those henna events. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take a little bit of black now. Maybe we can go ahead and add our pupil in the middle. It's a little wet still, but once it's even like tacky wet, you can usually put black on top. Nice. Definitely giving it that classic evil eye look. And then I'm going to outline the eye shape. like so. Very striking. And if you want that eye to look like it's wide awake and watching, then you can leave it like that. But you can also sort of thicken this top lid and cover the very top part of the iris and it will make it look a little less scary, but I kind of like that look. <laughs> All right, very cute. And let's just add a few little final details. I think we could take some black and add some dots here and there. Very pretty. Go here in the bottom part. I'm gonna do So maybe along the edge here and these dots really make it and this is very much like henna again when you're kind of creating these designs and then filling them in with more decorative details only this is more fun because we get to use different colors and I never minded really doing the henna because they were adults, but the face painting, the wiggly kids, does not make an ideal canvas. <laughs> Cute canvas, but not easy to paint on. And then I'd have little tiny kids and would be turned into like full face tigers. I'm like, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, how about a rainbow? Uh, okay, and then let's do maybe a few over here. Just kind of filling it out now. So cute. I think we should add some white dots too. All right. Very cool. I think it adds a little bit of a kind of a tactile element, which is interesting too. And truly you can do whatever you like in your Hamza. Whatever looks good to you. Kind of like the black and white next to each other. I think it looks pretty. One, two, three, one, two, three. And again, it doesn't have to be just like mine. I think I'll do some dots down the center too. And then I think will be decorated enough. You're looking pretty cute. Very pretty painting to hang in your house and ward off any bad vibes. You don't have to be uh, Jewish or Arab to enjoy this. So feel free to hang it in your house 
and tell all your friends about it. <laughs> but I think that looks really cute. And we're gonna go ahead and call that good. Again, I'd love to know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. And don't forget to join us over in the art club. That is all the instructions that I have for us this week. So thank you so much for painting along. Thank you so much for subscribing. I love you all. <laughs> and happy painting. And until next time, stay creative.